What's up guys, it's Oscar here and today I'm going to show you how to build a connected network in After Effects. Now we're going to be building a fairly complex network like this one over here. If you use plugins for example like Connect Layers or the Beam Effect, you'll notice that they're great for creating abstract networks or simple connected dots and lines. But if you want to follow a specific design as a reference, like for example these ones, I found those plugins rather difficult to implement. So today I'm going to show you a process using the Essential Graphics Panel and Layer Names so that you can automatically create and duplicate complex network links like this one. Let's start with creating a simple circle over here. We're going to be creating two circles, one bigger than the other one, and we're going to create a line path using the pen tool to connect. So super simple so far, we have our circles and our line. Now we're going to select the path and we're going to go to Window, Create Nodes from Paths. Now this is a super cool script that comes in every After Effects, which takes the paths that you have and adds null objects to the ends, so it is easy to modify. So in this case, by selecting Points Follows Nulls, I can control the path using the position of these null objects. At this point, you'd probably be like Oscar, you can easily parent the nulls to each of these circles and you have the path. That's the easy approach when you only have one path, but it makes it difficult if you want to duplicate it and add more circles later on. Now we're going to rename the path here along with the different nodes. We're going to call this path one. For the ending node, I'm gonna put path one comma two, and then for the origin node, path one comma one. Now this is going to be the base for our preset. So here's the trick. We're going to pre-compose these layers by hitting shift command C and call them path comma one. Now in the pre-comp, we're going to leverage the essential graphics feature. If you haven't used the essential graphics menu before, it's a tool that lets you access properties from pre-comps and modify them without having to go back and forth between the main comp and the pre-comp. In our case, we'll grab the origin and the endpoints, which correspond to the positions of the origin and end. We'll also add a trim command to the end using the trim. That way, we can extend or shrink the paths whenever we want. Now, once we're back in the main comp, you'll see that these essential properties show up in the dropdown and we can edit them directly from the main. The best part is that we can duplicate this comp as many times as we want and give it unique values without affecting the master pre-comp. Now, this is one of the most important parts of the process, naming the circles properly. Everything that we're going to be covering here is going to be based on the layer name. We're going to be assigning numbers to each of the circles and naming each path based on the circles that it connects using this format, origin, comma, and. This will be like their unique ID, which will make it easy for us to identify the circles and the paths later on. Now we're going to use this expression to parent the origin of the path to the first circle's position by extracting the circle's ID from the layer. Now you'll be thinking, Oscar, what the heck is this expression? Well, this takes the name of the layer and separates it by the comma, creating an array of paths. The zero tells us that we're going to access the first part of the array, which in this case is the number one. Because you can put anything in the layer name, whether it's text or numbers, we need to add the parse int modifier to tell After Effects that we want this to be a numeric value. Once we have that, we're going to add this following expression to reference the circle that we want. P equals this comp dot layer circle comma plus OR. So OR is going to be the ID of the origin circle. And now we're going to be referencing the circle that has that number. So again, we're taking the first number from the layer name and we're referencing the position of the circle that has that number. In this case, one. If this is difficult to understand, don't worry. It takes some time to understand it, but it is crucial to have all of the names referenced properly. Now, we're going to do the same for the ending, except that instead of taking the first number, we're going to take the second number. As you can see, the path automatically selects the position of the given circles. And whenever you move any of the circles, the path will follow automatically. Now, duplicating it is super easy because we have added the layer numbers at the end. Every time you duplicate a circle, it will increase in number. And every time you duplicate the path, it will also increase in numbers for the ending, which will automatically create a new path that is linked to that new circle. Now, we can animate this in any way that we want. Let's start by animating the first circle. For example, we're going to scale it up and then we're going to scale up the other two circles as well. Perfect. Now, one thing that I want to add here is the rotation of the circles. So we're going to be parenting these two small circles to the bigger circle. Unfortunately, when you do this, the expression breaks because now the position coordinates have changed. So now the position values of the circle don't actually reference the true position in the comp. 
For this, we need to add a new line of text. So that way, no matter to which layers it is parented, the links will always follow the circles. Now you can customize the links if you want by easily going into the master comp and say, for example, we're going to reduce the size of the stroke. Yep, and then we're just going to stylize this animation a little bit better. We're going to pre-compose it. And then right at the moment where it changes speed, we're going to invert it to add a little bit more action into it. Perfect. Now I'm happy with how this is looking. All it took was creating one pre-comp and duplicating it as many times as we want. Now let's take a look at a different example, which is a more complex network. For this one, it is super important to have a very good organization in place. As you can see, there's a lot of layers here which makes it challenging to keep track of which circle is which. So in this case, I've created text layers to quickly identify the number of the circles, and then I can accurately write down the comma-separated pairs for each. When you have a lot of layers like this, it's going to be super challenging to keep track of which layer is which, so I usually like to hide the layers that are not that important. As a reference, we have about 52 different circles, which we, gives us about over 150 layers. Because we've accurately created those paired numbers, we're able to quickly and easily stick to the main design. And if we want to make any adjustments, we can easily remove them or relink them by simply changing the number in the layer name. Now let's take a look at this other example. This is an example from the New York Times Vertex, which I thought it was another great way of applying this approach because you need to follow a very specific set of connections in order to form the shape. Similarly, we name our points using text and then create the comma separated pair. And because you're referencing a single master composition, you only need to go there once to stylize your line. So for example, we've added dashes to the strokes and we've animated them together and all of the lines follow the same pattern. So this approach gives you a lot of flexibility since you're able to quickly customize, change, and map the connected points. And it doesn't have to be points. We've talked about using images, icons, and any shape that you want, you can connect it using this technique. So I hope you see the power of using the Essential Graphics panel along with the layer names to create a powerful break. If you have any questions, let me know, and make sure to subscribe for more video tips like this. Thank you.